Cadillac tax has nothing to do with cars. It's a tax that's coming on health insurance plans that the government decides are too good. This week, Democrats and Republicans joined to postpone the tax, which was supposed to raise $9 billion under Obamacare. We looked into why it's so unpopular. Come here, buddy. Come here. What is this? Kate Rice is part of a diminishing crowd these days. Ooh, good job. The married mother of two likes her health care plan. She says her husband's union contract provides excellent coverage for the whole family. Right now, it's pretty affordable for us. Um, my husband's employer pays for most of it, and it's a good plan. But according to the Affordable Care Act, it's too good. And by the time three-year-old Spencer walks into kindergarten, the Rices and millions of families like them will be hit with the so-called Obamacare Cadillac tax. Yes, too much coverage, so you're going to get taxed on it. That doesn't equate. It doesn't seem like it's going to work very well. So. And it certainly doesn't seem fair. For the first time in our history, Americans will have their health care taxed as income. Policies valued at more than $10,200 for an individual or $27,500 for a family will be hit with a tax on 40 percent of the overage. According to a study by the Kaiser Foundation, that will affect one in four employee plans in the short term and all plans within a decade. For the average United Auto Workers Union employee, that means $2,000 a year in extra taxes. The Cadillac tax is so universally unpopular among union workers, Democrats, Republicans, businesses, it's actually led to something rarely seen in Washington, bipartisanship. Lawmakers from both sides of the aisle are lining up to repeal it. There are so many groups, uh, both on the Republican side and the Democrat side, that oppose it. Uh, this again affects millions and millions of middle class families across the country. The right thing for the president to do is acknowledge that it's bad public policy within the affordable Care Act and that we have to repeal it. But the Obama administration is digging in its heels. It insists the Cadillac tax will lower health care costs by forcing insurers to drop policies offering so much coverage. It also says as companies take away the high quality taxed plans, they'll make up for it by paying workers higher wages, something critics doubt. It's a sharp turn from 2008 when then presidential candidate Obama was against a Cadillac tax. It had been proposed by his Republican opponent. John McCain calls these plans Cadillac plans. Now, in some cases, it may be that a corporate CEO is getting too good a deal. But what if you're a line worker making a good American car like the Cadillac? What if you're one of the steel workers who are working right here in Newport News? And you've given up wage increases in exchange for better health care. Well, Senator McCain believes you should pay higher taxes, too. The bottom line, the better your health care plan, the harder you fought for your good benefits, the higher the taxes you'll pay under John McCain's plan. The Government Accountability Office estimates the Cadillac tax will bring in more than $87 billion over 10 years and help pay for the government's dramatic expansion of Medicare and other subsidies under Obamacare. Yeah, let's go on the swings, buds. Come on. 20,000 of those dollars would come from the Rice family. Oh. It, it doesn't really seem fair that they're going to, they tax you if you have this great plan. Um, there has to be a better way to do it than this. There really does. Under the congressional budget deal, the Cadillac tax will now be postponed until 2020. The president supports the tax, but the White House has indicated it could live with delaying it. Joining us now is analyst Robert Leshefsky, head of health policy and strategy associates and a frequent contributor here on Full Measure. A lot of people probably think, hey, it's getting put off till 2020. I don't have anything to worry about. The problem is that Congress hasn't taken the uncertainty away. Employers have been reducing their employee benefit programs, their health insurance plans, in part because they see this tax looming. They've got to have their plans budgeted and, and reduced in cost in order not to have to pay this really high tax. The Congress cut this tax and two other taxes that are in Obamacare. The Congress took $30 billion 
out of the funding for Obamacare, but the Congress didn't touch any of the Obamacare entitlements, such as the Medicaid expansion and the insurance subsidies. So ironically, the Republicans have taken $30 billion out of the pay-fors for Obamacare, haven't cut the entitlement, and really haven't taken the uncertainty for employers away. They've only suspended this for a couple of years. So the two problems, one, the tax is still coming as far as employers are concerned. That's right. that, that could have ultimately affect a lot of people. And then secondly, we've got the fact that they don't have the income from these postponed taxes to help support Obamacare. That's right. A lot of people are sort of shaking, shaking their heads here. What have we really accomplished? The uncertainty is still in the market and $30 billion is gone. Look, let's look at the Obamacare co-ops, another facet of this. Yeah. The co-ops were these nonprofits started with tax dollars, billions of our tax right. dollars, with the idea of providing more competition in the marketplace, and they're going bankrupt left yeah. and right. What's the status of that? Well, half of them have already failed and gone bankrupt and out of business. The Associated Press just, just did a report on the remaining co-ops in business. All of them are losing money. The main co-op, the only one that was making money before, is now having major losses. And the average losses for each of the remaining co-ops is about $20 million for 2015. So they're in pretty tough shape. So with the problems with the co-ops and other troubles, does Obamacare survive? Does it go away, limp along? What do you think? Well, Obamacare is limping along. It's going to have to be fixed. I mean, the, the plans that people are buying have uh, still too high prices, too high deductibles, that sort of thing. But what the Congress did is, all they, all they did this time is they cut the revenue for Obamacare by $30 billion, but they didn't fix anything. So I'm afraid it's all part of limping along. Thanks for the end of the year update. Robert Leshevsky. Still ahead, we chase taxpayer waste around the world, this time in London, where construction of this fancy new embassy came under tough questioning. We'll tell you the cost and why when we return.